What's going on everybody? Welcome back to How I Did It Garage. Today I'm going to be showing you how to lap in valves. This is off of a 2012 Chevy Malibu 2.4 engine. Uh, originally I took it off because I had low compression in number 3 cylinder and I believed it was the, I thought it was the intake valve, couldn't have found out it was the exhaust valve. What happened was something got caught in the cylinder and tried to go, uh, blow, I don't know if it was a screw or what, but it tried to blow out the exhaust valve and ended up bending the seal. Uh, bending the valve in the seal. Well, I had to head off. I went ahead and relapped all the valves in. I'm about to send it off to the shop, get it redecked because it's unlevel. If you are following the channel or if you was looking into the head gasket change video part one, this is the reason why it took so long for part two to come out because I had to redo this and uh, I had to wait for money to buy parts and I ran out of time because I do have a full-time job. So, But let's get into it. What I use to get the valve springs off and back on is this EWK uh, installation kit and removal kit. It works okay. It works really good for removing the valve springs. Get this as the magnetic ring in there. You put it on there like so and you tap it with a hammer. Most time one or two wax comes straight off. As far as installing, it's a different situation. It's a pain in the neck. You got this. You put it in there and you kind of push down with something on the bottom of the valve and kind of work it around and get it in there. I've managed to get this whole head done with this, so you can do it. I'll put a link in the description below if you are interested in this. So I've already got all of them done besides the one that is bent that I'm going to have to send to the machine shop, marked with X. And then this is the only one I got left. Um, I figured I'd save this one because I had to get some more uh, valve keepers. And really, I'll show you once and you should, you know, know how to do the rest. Barely get it in there. Get your lapping compound ready. As far as the lapping compound, I'm using the Loctite Clover. This is more of a fine grit lapping compound versus for grit lapping compound. I haven't had to use this yet so far. I've just used fine grit lapping compound. But you put it on there like so all the way around. Be careful with it and don't get it on the top of the valve. Get you some type of lubricant or spray the top of it. Push it back in. The way I do this, it's a lot faster, but you're supposed to use this. You flip it upside down, put this on the valve, and spin it. I like to do this to begin with, to kind of figure out how it is, but eventually I end up going to this. I got this quarter inch flex hose. You could just put the drill on it, but you might get it uneven. This right here gives a little bit of flex, so I like using this. Just down on it, and I get the drill, chuck it on the hose. Then I uh, slowly come up with it while spinning it and kind of work it back and forth, up and down. Then finally at the end, probably about 30 seconds, 20 seconds later, I just pull up on it really, really hard while spinning it and it pops loose. That's it. Then flip it back over, pop it out. Get your rag to clean up all the said make sure you don't get none of that grit up here. Get a nice little tap job on it. Clean the seal up. Now you're ready to install it. <clears throat> install the put it back in there and now you're ready to install the spring and check it. So now you get your rag or towel, fold it up like so. Put it underneath your valve on the bottom side. Push down on it, make sure it don't go down. Get your cap and your spring. Get your new keepers that <clears throat> has blown off in the past. <laughs> but I like it for doing this because when you're lapping valves in, or at least when I do it, <clears throat> I like to use this fine grit. Instead of just taking a whole bunch off with the rough grit at first. A couple of times, I'll put the springs back in, check it. If it don't, you know, if it still leaks, take it back off. So this helps out a lot for me because it's easy to take off and you know, it's a little, a little bit of a hassle to put back on, but it's worth it to me. Your keepers in your cap. That worked great. It don't until it does. What I like to do after you get it seated is to get your wooden block and just tap it a couple times. Now you can check it. You get you some water. Pour it down in there on the intake or exhaust side. Once you get the water in there, you can either let it sit for about 
60 minutes and check for water leakage around here or you can be impatient like me get your air hose and blow it around here and look for bubbles up here so that's what i'm gonna do i think it's pretty good i haven't seen no bubbles yet so i think that is a success so my issue was the number three was right here if you can see this is where whatever it was try to leave the exhaust valve and it oblonged it I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's <laughs> oblong. So, I got a new valve back there. I'm going to send them to the shop. And then, uh, they're going to put a new seat in it. So far, all the rest of these I was able to get lapped in and seated really good. It's just this one right here. So, I'm about to send this to the shop, get it fixed up, get it decked. So, as far as decking, a lot of people think that, you know, like this didn't run high. It, was just, it just had a misfire and I took it off. Even though it didn't run hot, this thing still, you still need to get it decked on sandpaper or whatever way you want to do it. I prefer send it to the machine shop and get it precision cut. And this is why right here. So I put the head on the marble slab that a lot of machine shops use to see how level things is. And I put a flashlight on the back side and as you can see right here, light shining through. If this thing was completely flat, you wouldn't be able to see no light coming through it at all. A lot of people use machinist levels, but... I have access to this, so this is what I used, which is more, it's better than a machinist level. So, this is why you need to get it decked, even if it don't run hot. Now, once I get this back from the shop, I'll finish up the part two of the head gasket change on the Mallee boat. But, until next time.